I just happened to come across something that I thought was interesting here in the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 5 uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, verse 20 I believe it is here Adah gave birth to Jabal he was the ancestor of the tent dwellers and owners of livestock his brother's name was Jubal he was the ancestor of all who played the lyre and the flute as for Zillah she gave birth to Tubal Cain. He was the ancestor of all metal workers in bronze and iron. Now, now you know why I'm interested in this passage. Now we know the, uh, the basically the the first uh, metal worker according to uh, the Old Testament, Tubal Cain. <laughs> the, the name Cain, by the way, means smith apparently. So. Uh, if you're a, a metal smith in this case, your, your name was Dubal King. Anyhow, I thought that was interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about rigidity here because this is fundamental to machining. Um, your setup uh, will either perform well or won't according to how rigid things are. So uh, in a milling machine, uh, you have the, uh, the interface between the cutting tool and the workpiece. So that's the first place right here cutting tool up here and workpiece down here, let's say. And then from there, you'll have, well, what's holding the cutting tool? And it might be a collet to the, to the tool. So you've got your tool here and your collet up here. And then from there, you've got uh, the collet to the spindle. Uh, whoops, that's not an S. I don't know where that came from. Uh, you've got the spindle. And uh, from here, you've got the spindle uh, to the machine, okay? So working upwards, you've got one, two, three uh, different places where rigidity can be a factor. Working downwards, you've got your workpiece to uh, the vice jaws right here. And then from the vice jaws to the vice itself, from the vice to the table, from the table to uh, what is called the knee if it's a manual machine, uh, and then from the knee to the column. So you've got one, two, three, four, five uh, places where metal is either clamped to metal or sliding across metal. Those are interfaces where rigidity becomes an issue. So all said and told, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got eight places where you can have play and looseness that can cause chatter or uh, you know bad things to happen, slippage or anything that might cause your uh, uh, your setup to fail. Okay, now that's on a mill. So we're going to call this on a manual mill, by the way. On a lathe, you've got similar things right here. Oops, again, I don't know where that came from. Right here in the middle, we're going to say this is your, um, uh, your workpiece here. And this is your cutting tool here. Okay. So going from the cutting tool, uh, generally speaking, this is a little more complex uh, because the cutting tool a lot of times is a carbide insert. So you've got that, uh, your cutting tool, your carbide insert to your, uh, what we call the tool holder. And then from your tool holder, you've got it to your tool post, uh, which might be a turret or it might be a, uh, what, what we call a KDK or a dovetail type uh, holder. Uh, uh, Okay, and then uh, from your um, uh, tool post, that's gonna go on to your uh, compound rest. And from your compound rest, it's gonna go to your carriage. And from your carriage, it's gonna go to your, uh, to, the, uh, to the machine's bed, okay? Now for your workpiece, uh, that's gonna go from your workpiece to your uh, chuck, let's say. And from your chuck, it's gonna go to your spindle. And from your spindle, it's gonna go to the headstock. So you've got all those interfaces there where chatter can occur. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, you've got eight places there that need to be uh, rigid and fairly tight. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, chatter and uh, 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 erroneous or wrong movement uh, causing uh, either poor quality parts or broken tools or uh, you know, the, the machine's going to jam up or something's going to go wrong on you. You've got to make sure that all of these places here where metal meets metal are clean, where they're tight, 
and where there's uh, nothing interfering in there like dirt and chips. Now what I like to do is you, you can't necessarily uh, guarantee that all these are uh, what you want them to be when you set the machine up. But what you want to make sure of is that where lubricants are necessary, that things are, are well lubed. That you've got oil in there where oil belongs. You want to make sure that things are clean. And by clean, we mean uh, without uh, dirt or any other kind of debris. And where there's uh, uh, no, no liquids or oil or fluids or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to put down dry. Okay. You want things to be lubed, you want things to be uh, uh, without dirt and dry. Okay, there's that one. And then you also want things to be uh, flat, cylindrical, straight, uh, you know, without dings. Uh, so I, I don't know exactly how to describe this, but uh, let's say uh, uh, flat, uh, cylindrical, uh, Basically, uh, uh, I'll just say free of dings. <laughs> Any place where uh, the surfaces don't fit smoothly together is a place for problems to arise. So when you set something up, you can blow it off with an air hose, but then wipe it down. Make sure it's flat, smooth, clean. But then you also want to check it for such things as dings and uh, divots and whatever you want to call them because that's going to uh, keep this in mind for example you've got a flat piece of metal right there and you're going to set another piece of metal right on top of it like that here's your your, your work piece that you're working with if this here gets hit with a hammer or something like that it pooches the metal out here okay but metal doesn't disappear the metal that's been removed from here is pooched up along the sides like that. Think of a crater impact, it's about the same thing. So when you take your piece of metal and you put it on top of that, you're sitting on top of those dings there and that creates a gap and when you've got that gap that means that the contact isn't as tight and clean as it should be so it's prone to slipping or to vibration or moving one way or the other. So you want to stone that or file that flat. You want to make sure that things sit like they should. And it also tells you, don't treat your, uh, your tooling and your, uh, and your work pieces like they're garbage. Don't drop them on the floor. Don't drop metal on top of metal because it's going to get dinged, especially your cutting tools. You take your cutting tools and you drop them on metal, that damages your cutting tools. It also damages the table. So keep it clean, keep it flat, keep it smooth and your setups and your pr production uh, will be that much better. It takes a little bit of effort, but it's always well worth it. Thank you very much. God bless you.